Hey there, YouTubers. Trevor here. I just wanted to go over something uh, that's really been consuming a lot of my time lately. I haven't put out any of my normal videos. Uh, for those of you that are here that are not my normal subscribers, you're probably here because the title of this video, which is going to be about how to make your own home gym or your own power rack. Now, this power rack is different than most of the others that I've seen online from my research prior to building this and prior to creating this 3D model in Google SketchUp. I will be providing a link in a future video, possibly even this one, so check the description box below. Um, and if you come back to this video a second time, I, I may have updated it and added the link. So just keep an eye in the description below for a link to this 3D model. I will be making changes to the model. Um, and there's some things that I've learned through this process of making my own power rack that I can apply to changing the model for the better. Bear with me here. The second half of this video is me actually uh, building the power rack and then overcoming a small deficiency in the design and one reason why I might update it. And that would be uh, the adjustability of the safety bars. Right now you can only adjust them through these four before the bench component and then there's a skip here because the bar can't obviously pass through where the um, bench press component is. But I've got a, um, a better way of supporting the weight that works for me when I do my squats that I didn't consider. So this portion, this bench press component, uh, can be turned off, okay, and you would just account for that in the flooring. So what you're going to see in the video is going to begin at the framing level. Okay, and it's basically, let me turn off all these other layers, and what, what, what you're going to start seeing is just this. In fact, I think in the opening scene, I'm actually drilling out the holes for these 2x6 um, these uh, posts. So everything else is the same. Uh, there's a gusset layer here. I don't have any gussets in this because it's so strong as is. I didn't feel the need to add them, but the original plans that I had had gussets at the top. But uh, And here's a pull-up bar, which is there. It's just held in. Well, and you'll see it in the video where I drill it out and I just cap it off with a, a small section of 2x4 so the bar won't lift vertically. Um, but yes, uh, one thing I was finding in my research was nobody had a deadlift area on their power racks. It was just a power rack or they had just a deadlift area. So I combined the two into one and um, I did it in such a way that it was economical. The rubber matting comes from Tractor Supply and I have a little, a little detail on that when, uh, in the video. But... For the most part, when we turn off the framing, you can see it's just stacks of three-quarter inch rubber mat and then a three-quarter inch piece of plywood, then three-quarter inch rubber mat, then plywood, and then it's capped off on the top with a piece of rubber mat that goes around the framing that has all that in there. So let's go ahead and turn off the, uh, the barbell, and uh, we'll turn off the top layer of the flooring for the rubber mat, and you can see how it's stacked in there, and then we'll put the framing back in, and it's stacked inside the framing, and then the rubber mat just caps it off. Um, but yes, so this is my home gym that I built from scratch and from these plans. So keep an eye out for the plans, but uh, enjoy the video. And um, it, uh, like I said in the video, I, I'm in week three of 531. This is my power week, and in fact today is Friday, so it is my squat day. I had to overcome this deficiency in raising, being able to raise the bar up and having these fixed hole heights which I go over in the video, and I'm going to add to the plan as well. Uh, having this plan is, is really going to be a valuable tool for you if you go to do this yourself, and editing these things in uh, Google SketchUp are, are dead simple. Um, if I wanted to make this longer, I would just do this, and you see how it's stretching the distance down the bottom right-hand corner there. You see that number sliding around. If you go to grab a surface and just start pulling it, and you type in the number 1.5, it goes 1.5 inches. So. Being able to throw a ruler on these things, okay, being able to come in here and say, okay, well, maybe I need to get a piece that's 35 and a half inches long. You can do your math, figure out how many 2x4s you need, how many 2x6s, how many 2x10s you're going to have to get. And let's go ahead and get into the video and keep an eye out for the plans in the description in the future. So I do all nine holes and then I flip it over and then just punch out the biscuits. And then you're left with nice clean holes on both ends. You don't get any ragged edges.
so ideally you want perfectly perpendicular to 90 degrees your holes to be perfectly perpendicular to this surface so that way all your bars line up on, on, on level so that's why I'd recommend getting hold of a drill press to do this um, you could probably do it by hand but you're probably going to wallow want to wallow out the holes a bit so that everything lines up if you're not perfectly perpendicular uh, I just ordered a, um, a piece from Sears which is a drill bit guide and it's very similar to this but it's got a plunging mechanism that you just use a hand drill with but you can set it at different angles and as long as you set it perpendicular and it's completely completely flat on this you can just you know as long as the plunging guide uh, allows you to uh, adjust the angle you can get exactly the angle you want so but doing it by hand would be very very challenging especially if you try to do it in place you want to make sure you get it perfectly centered on that hole and then punch out that biscuit so we'll go ahead and just do that one hole show you what I'm talking about take a, a punch of some sort and just poke out the biscuit and now we've got a hole you can go all the way through so that's it. That uh, goes pretty quick if you have a helper. And uh, take your time. Make sure that everything is centered and measured from the bottom up um, precisely. And, uh, you know, from side to side into the center as precise as you can get it. And then now, once I'm finished punching all these biscuits out, this is, this is my last one. I can go ahead and get these started. And the easy part now is to get them aligned, uh, put them in their appropriate places within the base, and then slide the safety bars through them and that'll hold them together while I construct the rest of it and tie in the tops and tie in the bottoms. Okay guys, I cannot say enough about getting these clamps. Okay, they really, really act as a second person helping you. Not only that, the one thing you don't want when you're screwing things together is any type of air gap. You want those two pieces drawn as tight as possible together. And as you can see, I've got almost perfect alignment. All right, guys, so the top is all wedged in. Okay, you see where I've got the inner board screwed to the outer board, and they're, they're wedging the top in nicely. Now we just need to address the bottom. And uh, what I had to do here, because the holes don't line up perfectly, because you have to drill them all separate, right? And this is a separate stack from this stack. Um, I went ahead and put the paddle bit back on here, just got it inside the hole and reamed it out basically, okay? So, but this is after I got everything plumb, uh, tight together, it's best aligned the holes as possible, got it nice and tight here, and then got a second clamp further down below the hole set, so one in the middle of the hole set, one below the hole set, clamped in really, really tight, make sure the bar can move freely. Um, as best possible and then I just reamed all the holes and then moved the bar up and tested each of the holes made sure that it makes the span and aligns perfectly and then I went ahead clamped the bottom down on both sides there and we're going to run a 10 inch bolt through the bottom um, because I'm going to need the, the drill bit and the drill itself to fit in we're going to take out uh, these two screws and these two screws on both sides pull this joist out, pull this joist out, and then I'll have room to drive a 7-inch uh, bolt this way, right? So we've got 3, and then this makes 3, makes 6. Again, an extra inch to bolt it. I'm going to put the bolt heads on the outside, washers on the inside, same on this, okay? Bolt head will be on this side going this way, the washer and the nut will be on this side as well. So the nuts are on the inside, the bolt heads are on the outside, We'll get that all tightened up on one side, then we'll go to the other. And uh, then structurally, this will be finished. Um, again, it's just a matter of getting everything lined up perfectly, okay, as, as best you can. Anyways, you got to get the clamps. Uh, they're kind of pricey. I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the previous segment, but they're about $20 a piece, and they're worth every penny. You can never have enough clamps when you're working with wood, especially if you do a lot of woodwork by yourself. They are an indispensable second hand and especially when you're trying to glue things together you really want a good amount of pressure before your screws can take hold and really the screws are there just, just there to hold the wood as tight together as possible um, while the glue dries so all right took everything's 
slides nice and easy. Got the bottom bolt in the same way. Just a really long boring bit. And instead of using a paddle bit, I used the boring bit because I've got, uh, I already had it. And you can see where I blew out. There we go. The only downside to using a boring bit. Place it in there. Get a washer on that. Smack it through. It'll stick out about another inch here. Hopefully, it doesn't, uh, yeah, there's not too many threads are going to show there. Okay, so aside from uh, some uh, organizing in the garage here, the bench is done, and I uh, just need to clean up the garage now. As you can see, um, the safety bars are set up. They slide in and out perfectly. Okay, very easy to move and rotate, and I hang my lighter weights up front here. Um, the only problem is, is that when I measured everything specific to my body, I had measured my bench height off of a spec that I had found online. But anyways, uh, the, the bench is about two, two and a half inches too tall. So the safety bars, because they're spaced four inches on center, because of that, um, I need a way of elevating my safety bars, and I can't. So what I'm going to do is, I've got some wood, I'm going to uh, make some modifications here, is I'm going to put a strip of wood in on each side of the hole, and make it an inch and a half wide and then be able to slip a, a piece of 2 by 4 or actually, actually a, a 2 by 3 so it's a 1 and a half by 2 and a half inches that'll give me you know basically up to about here but I'll find the perfect height so that when I'm in proper bench press form um, I still have the safety protection of the rack the main concern here is that I'd be able to uh, shim this in such a way that if I drop the bar I could unload my traps, move my shoulders, and let the bar just hit these, or what's going to be the shimmed bar, and I just push it forward, roll it, and pull myself out, and stay safe when I'm able to push my one rep max. Um, so, yeah, that's it. This is the gym. Very, very pleased with it. The wood I got, uh, this I paid a little extra for this, but it's three quarter inch oak plywood, very, very hard. I pre-drilled all these holes. I didn't want to, even though these are um, tapped bits, I didn't want to uh, to push it and have it split. So I pre-drilled all the holes and then came through and screwed them. So all the way around the periphery, okay, this is exactly a four foot by eight foot sheet. And that's why I built it this way. This four foot sheet, that's exactly four feet and that's exactly eight feet all the way to the tail end. Okay, then I just came in an inch and a half, cut it back to there, came in whatever this measurement is, like four inches, and then came out six inches, came back in, and I just cut all that with the jigsaw. And once you get to here, it's basically four feet out. Let me move this. These are my squat shoes. From that corner right here all the way to the end is exactly four feet. So four foot by eight foot sheet of plywood. Um, I showed the joists in previous video, so you can actually see um, that they're about five and a half inches on center. So this will, this platform will hold way more weight with me standing on it with the weight in my hands on a deadlift than I will ever be able to deadlift. So I'm not concerned about that. Platform's extremely rigid. The whole system's extremely rigid. But um, and then here I just use this as a corner. I take the the Olympic bar. And then I do shoulder presses, so I load up the top of the, the, of the bar, the bottom of the bar has nothing on it. It sits in that wedge and I just push it up as a, a leaning shoulder press, straight out shoulder press, that is a neutral grip. So this is a 3 quarter inch stall mat. It's made in Canada, it's good quality rubber, and it's made, uh, you get it at Tractor Supply. A 4 foot by 6 foot sheet is $40, it's $39.99. And, um, it's just literally, to cut it, I had to use a jigsaw. They also sell this cheaper uh, quarter-inch rubber uh, sheet. Uh, they sell it by the foot, and I got five feet of it. And this is the remnant, okay? Uh, and here's the, the piece. All right, guys, just getting ready to start my warm-up set, and this is what the result is. It's not pretty, but it's very effective. I was able to lay down on the bench with just bar weight pull the bar across my chest and it literally just barely kisses this wood. As long as I keep my back engaged and I'm, and I'm up on my traps, this will just touch my sternum right when it's getting ready to touch the wood. If it put, uh, put on too much weight and go for too much of a max rep, 
it will uh, definitely save my ass. But as you can see here, the bar is underneath it, and this just slides down in the slot. And this is a two by three, so it's actually one and a half inches by two and a half inches. A two by four would give me a little bit extra, but I don't need that. The next bar down, I might go with a two by four. But uh, yeah, very very effective. That's all I got. Later.